Who gave inferences, who said if you take an inference of an event, that's plenty. You didn't do any facts. As I laid out in my closing statement, it was amazing how we cherry picked on the majority side only opening statements, which only gave untested material, but didn't give anything later when those same witnesses were actually tested. That's why I said, if you want these facts, you've got to also take these facts. The majority right now, frankly, is lost. They don't know which way to go because the facts are not in their favor and the American people are not on their side. So when we look at this going forward, I would have a question. When is my minority hearing day? By the way, for any of the media, they cannot deny our minority hearing day. They can obfuscate and try, but they cannot deny it. So we're waiting for our minority hearing day. But we're also waiting to see if this chairman is going to do like he said he never would do, and that's simply set a report from another entity without us investigating it first. So we have a lot of questions today. None of them got answered by this majority. Anybody else? Well, this continues to show that this whole impeachment process is a total sham. As I asked in my testimony, I said, quoted the words from Nadler himself, which were a three-pronged test, and he failed meeting his own standards for impeachment. And he said that if he didn't meet those standards of impeachment, that it would tear the country apart. Well, Mr. Nadler, you and your Democrat colleagues are tearing the country apart. Stop the sham. Yeah. The hearing started with the chairman saying the facts are undisputed. Well, he needs a lesson in undisputed facts. The way that is supposed to occur is we have some facts that we've agreed on. We stipulate by and between us that the following is true. That didn't happen. He made up what he said were facts, they were disputed facts because they weren't facts. And, and then to hear from law professors, uh, I mean, I have enjoyed discussing, debating with liberal law professors, conservatives, but these did not make any room for the fact there's a good chance they were wrong. We had one professor who just absolutely fictionalize what the president said to, to meet her own statement. And then another said he was so reluctant to go to impeachment when his tweets from day one nearly have been, he wants to go full speed ahead. So all I got to say is, if you love America, mamas don't let your babies grow up to go to Harvard or Stanford Law School. Not only are the facts clearly disputed, all the pertinent facts, unlike what the chairman said, but what happened here today is totally unprecedented. You have to remember, this is the committee that has true jurisdiction over impeachment. We should have been handling this the entire time, but instead, apparently, Speaker Pelosi didn't trust Chairman Nadler, handed it to Chairman Schiff instead, and they made a mess of this thing. So now here we are. This is the first time in history, it's unprecedented, that the minority has not had the ability to review the undisputed facts. We're supposed to make a determination on articles of impeachment, and we don't even know what the facts are. We don't know what all the underlying evidence is that's been gathered. No one except for two members who are on both committees have seen any of that. When the Starr Report came out in 1998, and Ken Starr presented to the Judiciary Committee, as was appropriate. He took questions from both sides. He took questions from the counsel for the president. None of that's happened here today. We should have had Adam Schiff here. We should have had him as a fact witness and some others, but we didn't get that opportunity. What I said in my uh, closing, and I'll say it here one more time, is that what we're worried about is the eroding trust of the people in our institutions. I did two town halls on Monday back in my district. The people there are deeply concerned. They're beginning to not trust the Congress, not trust our system of justice, and they certainly don't trust this impeachment sham. And this is uh, the thing we're, they're worried about going forward for the decades to come. We set a very dangerous precedent with this, and we're very frustrated about it, as you can tell. All right, we'll take questions. Collins, you yeah. said at the end of the hearing that you don't know what's next, you don't know, you know what, uh, what the course of action will be. But that said, would you encourage Intelligence Committee members on, the, uh, on your side to come for the committee? You know, that was the inclination of what uh, Nadler said, that he was going to have some sort of a hearing or some sort of a forum, that they should come and present their side? Well, I think the interesting thing is we don't know, Chad. I mean, you, you bring a great question. And, and if I don't understand, there's an old saying from, uh, from my background as a pastor. It says when there, when there is a uh, mist in the pulpit, there's a fog in the congregation. And right now, there's a mist out coming out from the chairman because there's a fog, because nobody knows what's going on. 
we're hearing that there's going to be a judiciary presentation. We hear that there's going to be an intel presentation. All we know is what Adam Schiff got up in front of a mics yesterday and said, I'm not testifying. Since when did he have the right, especially if he believes him to be, as he's compared himself to Ken Starr, why would he not be the one to come and testify instead of sending one of their staffers who is getting airtime right now uh, to do that? I don't understand that. And, and the chairman wouldn't even commit to even long-term hearings, so I don't know. That's uh, all. What he's saying is that he thinks we should have intel people come in and give us their impression of all the hearsay evidence. That's insane. Bring in the fact witnesses. I mean, that would be... He wrote the report. Next. Yeah. Congressman. Democrats say you're arguing about the process because you can't dispute the facts that were laid out by right. these witnesses. What's your reaction to that? Did you listen to my closing? That's all I'll say is I laid out every time they talked about the, where they was, even Mr. Sondland. What was amazing to me today, if you watched that, is they set up and they did their opening statements. Most every clip they gave was from opening statements, not when they were challenged later. Sondland, who said, yep, it was there, but later on said, well, I presumed. In that very room said, I presumed it was, I, I guessed it was. I mean, the problem was, it's, it's okay, that's what we're about. They're going to present their side, we're going to present our side. But when you talk about facts being undisputed, these facts are disputed, not just disputed, they're actually contradicted. So we have no problem fighting on substance. This president did nothing wrong. There was nothing that we found as impeachable. He did not do anything wrong. So I've said all along, it's easy for us to make the argument because the process is terrible and the facts are on our side. We're telling the truth. Yes. You keep saying that the president was concerned about corruption, but neither, in neither of those phone calls he mentioned the word corruption. Why is it? Why do you? Why didn't the president mention the word corruption and instead ask the Ukrainian president to investigate the Biden? Well, that's almost like saying, why don't you ask? You know, frame your questions differently. He said this is what he wanted to look into. He said, can as he said, help us as a country because we're trying to heal. We've had, as, as uh, Mr. Jordan said earlier, and did a great job. At, we had just come off the Mueller hearing, which was most all of you covered and found to be a total disaster for the impeachment narrative that the Democrats have been saying. What we're simply saying here is, is that the, the issue was what happened on that call. And then there became all these stories from the whistleblowers about all these things that supposedly happened. And since then, fact witnesses and even hearsay evidence has said, no, that's not what happened. So my question, I go back to something. And everyone, if Mr. Nadler stands here, ask him this question. He said it almost 20 years ago, that we should never accept a, que a report from another entity and just accept it and rubber stamp it. I have a question for Mr. Nanner. Is he just simply going to rubber stamp this to get to the two things that I've said, the clock and the calendar? Well, Thanks. Mention corruption. Why not All of the witnesses raised some questions about the obstruction part of this, complying with subpoenas. Even Mr. Turley suggested if it went to court, the president might lose. Why shouldn't the president have to comply with lawful subpoenas? Well, the question is, is also, as I brought up in my testimony today, is it not right for also the president, not only President Trump, President Obama, and go back through to President Clinton, actually bring up where there is executive issues, there's executive privilege. Those are things that he can bring up, because also, if you look at what is actually, what no, it's not, but let me finish. What he's, what he's doing right now is saying we're not going to, yeah, he's fed a blanket, but part of the problem that we're having here is that th what we're doing is fighting for the same rights that he is supposed to. Mr. Turley said yes, he should, because if he doesn't take up for those rights, then we have an imbalance of power. This is something that can be worked out. The problem here is, and your question is valid in this sense, we're in such a complete time crunch here that we don't care if we can go and do other remedies. What I found out earlier, and going back to something, because I brought this up earlier, in our committee, when we were fighting with the Department of Justice to get documents and things, it was amazing. Adam Schiff and the Intel Committee went and sat down with them and all of a sudden started getting documents. Other committees, Foreign Affairs has done a great job of getting documents from the administration. Only the Judiciary Committee seems to keep having problems because they don't know how to sit down with the administration and have give and take to get documents and find ways to do it. Our committee is simply hell-bent on impeachment. Thank you all. Yeah, until we hear from the court, we don't know that they're lawful. I would submit they're not.